In this video I want to solve a special relativity problem that may reconcile some uh, cognitive dissonance that you're having. So let's, let's think about a relativistic particle. So this is a particle of mass m. And say that this particle feels a constant force. Let's call it f naught acting to the right. So uh, classically we know that this particle feels constant acceleration. So therefore it would its uh, velocity would linearly increase forever. So here, acceleration, since f equals ma, the acceleration is just f naught over m. So the velocity as a function of time would just be linear. So velocity, assuming that it starts at rest, the velocity as a function of time is f naught over mt. But this is a problem in relativity because if we wait long enough, if t gets large enough, for example, if it gets larger than cm over f naught, then eventually this particle reaches the speed of light and then goes faster and faster and faster and higher than the speed of light, which seems to violate the principle of relativity. So what do we change about this analysis in order to get something consistent with special relativity? Well, to do that we're going to need to use our revised notion of what momentum is in special relativity. So in, in relativity, we remember that the momentum of a particle now is no longer given by just the mass times the velocity. We have p is gamma, gamma mass times the velocity, where we remember gamma is this Lorentz factor. Gamma is 1 over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. So now, our old equation f equals ma, or f equals dp dt, so f equals dp dt. So now using this new expression for the momentum, this is going to be m times the derivative of gamma v with respect to time. So gamma v is now a more complicated function of the velocity, and we know in this particular case that the force is constant. So this is given by f naught. So again, if we assume that the velocity at time zero equals zero, so that our particle starts at rest, we can integrate this, this equation pretty easily. So when we do that, moving the m to the other side and integrating, we get gamma v, gamma times the velocity, equals f naught over m t. And now let me just move down to give us some more room. So now, if we want to solve this equation and now get velocity as a function of time, so that we can see how this guy evolves, how its velocity changes. Uh, this means that putting in our, let me square both sides to get rid of the square root. So if I square both sides, that means v squared over 1 minus v squared over c squared equals f naught over m t whole thing squared. So now let's say we want to solve this, so we have to do a little algebra. We multiply both sides by the denominator, so this means uh, v squared equals f naught squared over m squared. I mean this doing out the square on each term, so when we multiply this, we get one term that's this guy times the one, minus another term that's this guy times the v squared. So f naught squared over m squared t squared times the v squared over c squared. And now to solve for v, we need to move this guy over to the left-hand side and then factor out the v. And then when we do that, we get a v squared times 1 plus f naught squared t squared over m squared c squared equals f naught squared t squared over m squared. And now switching color once more for the grand conclusion. This means that, therefore, our conclusion for the velocity as a function of time is v of t equals, uh, taking the square root, now we just have an f naught t, f naught t over the square root of m squared plus f naught squared f naught squared t squared over c squared. Good. Okay. So, uh, so this last step was just um, 
moving this to the other side, and then moving this m downstairs. So this is our answer for the velocity as a function of time of a relativistic particle under constant force. So does this agree with our intuition? Well, of course, for for small t, for small t, ooh, small t, so for example, before this guy gets anywhere near the speed of light, so f naught t is much, much smaller than, than c. So in the denominator, this is just roughly the square root of m squared, or m. So v of t equals f naught over mt. So that's exactly the classical result. That's good. But then what happens as t gets large, as t goes to infinity, then this term beats out the m squared in the bottom, so this term dominates. Then the square root on the bottom just becomes f naught t over c. The f naughts cancel, the t's cancel. And then we see as t tends to infinity, the velocity goes to c. So this is good. Now our classical intuition has been amended by this new equation, which agrees with the classical equation for, for small times. And then as times go to infinity, this guy approaches the speed of light, but never quite reaches it. So now this agrees with our relativistic intuition that nothing can go faster than the speed of light c. And we've solved the problem. Thank you for watching.